The African American Legend series highlights the accomplishments of blacks in areas as varied as politics, sports, aviation, business, literature, and drama. We will explore how African Americans have succeeded in areas where they had been previously excluded because of segregation, racism, and lack of opportunity. I'm your host, Dr. Roscoe C. Brown, Jr., and with us today is my friend Woody King, producer of the New Federal Theater, and we've been on this road for a long time, Woody. Yeah, and I'm glad to be back. <laughs> We're glad to be back. I'm always so pleased because I can always bring people up to date on what we're doing now, yeah, rather you, than what we did last time. You know? That's exactly right. We've been doing it for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. You and Doug and some of those folks have been the really the frontier people mm -hmm. in bringing black theater to the forefront. Yes. And it's so important that our folks and other folks understand the role of theater as we express our concerns about the African-American experience. You've done a great job with this. Thank you. Uh, one of the things that uh, happened early last year uh, in Atlanta, they were honoring the Negro Ensemble mm -hmm. Company. Well, and I used I, to be the chairman of the board. Well, that's what I know. That's <laughs> what I'm telling you, yeah. you know. Uh, and I went down there. And at the end of the uh, presentation, they said, all the people who worked at the Negro, please stand up. The entire auditorium stood up and, the, and said, okay, those who were in plays and all that, who wrote plays, come to the stage. You couldn't hardly get yeah, on the stage. Yeah, it was yeah. so packed. You yeah. know what I mean? Now, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, when you look at history and you look at the present, you wonder why things have changed the way they have. There was so much energy coming out of the civil rights movement. People wanted to express and, and the like, and mm -hmm. opportunities, small theaters, stuff that we started. Mm -hmm. uh, now you have to have $10 million to do something, except for you with your creativity. Mm -hmm. uh, what has really happened to black theater? Well, I think uh, uh, what happened in the last 15 or 20 years, artists who matured in those years that mm -hmm. uh, we were doing it for little money or no money, mm -hmm. suddenly had families and mm -hmm. offsprings, kids in college, et cetera. And they had more responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So they had to earn more to mm -hmm. uh, be able to continue in it. Mm -hmm. And so they either left that business and went into motion picture, television, and film, or they went into another business altogether mm -hmm. uh, because they, the black theater cannot afford mm -hmm. Uh, to uh, compete, in a sense, mm -hmm. with the white theaters. Mm -hmm. There's no way a uh, small mm -hmm. theater like ours mm -hmm. or like the Negro Ensemble mm -hmm. uh, could, in a sense, compete mm -hmm. with Lincoln Center mm -hmm. or the Mark Taper Forum or Kennedy Center mm -hmm. or these large theaters that are endowed and have very, very highly visible chairman of the board mm -hmm. who also president of Time Warner mm -hmm. and all that. It's very hard to... Um, uh, for these small theaters to compete with that. Mm -hmm. And those large, large budgets of uh, two and a half to three million dollars a month. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very hard to do that. You know, uh, I think Lincoln Center is 25 million dollars. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, the New York Shakespeare Festival would be 17 mm -hmm. million dollars. Uh, and the Kennedy Center is just out of all of our reach. So what we are uh, in is in a media capital, New York City, Los Angeles, London, Washington, mm -hmm. D.C., a media capitals. Mm -hmm. And if we can't get on shows like yours uh, and let the people know what's happening, the media, whether it's the New York Times or mm -hmm. ABC, NBC, traditional media, mm -hmm. they're not interested in what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So our people who watch these shows mm -hmm. don't know what we're doing, so they can't even come out to support us. But see, this relates to the historic role of theater throughout culture. Theater has been a way in which people from time immemorial have expressed their concerns, their anxieties, their political aspirations and the like. At this time in our history as a country, we are pretty comfortable. We're too comfortable. Mm -hmm. We think we own the world. We think we can tell the world what to do. Mm -hmm. And those of us who are dis uh, uncomfortable with that have a trouble getting a voice. Mm -hmm. The theater had given us a voice. And coming out of the civil rights movement, where the larger society was so guilty about the way they had treated black folks for so long, they let us have that Their voice. voice right. And as you say, the, basically, it's the young who express these concerns. Mm -hmm. When uh, they matured, had families and so on, and we were talking about some of them before the show, uh -huh. as they mature, uh, they aren't necessarily replaced because the new generation go to business school, law school, 
medical school and they have a professional outlet. Right. Which then brings us back to where are we now in mm -hmm. terms of contemporary black theater? And you can relate this to your own theater, the New Federal Theater. Okay. Which, by the way, when was the New Federal Theater founded? 1970s, That's 33 right. years That's old. exactly mm -hmm. right. We've, I been, we've been around forever. Right? Yeah, I, I think I was at the 30th anniversary. Right, right. It, was, it was huge, you yeah. know. Um, where we are now, uh, need like a little background to bring us up to a point. Like, I think you pointed out so rightly, the civil rights movement gave us a voice. We had something, we had an ism. We believed in something. We were against racism. We were against all kind of fascisms and all that. And so we had the theater to speak out and immediately talk about that. Okay. Then uh, the civil rights movement came along and uh, we were in the middle of that. We could talk about this, what this was happening, this was happening, and theater gave us that platform. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then apartheid. I know you know the plays of the late 80s yeah. before Mandela went in, yeah. uh, Asina Mali, Rosa Albert, yeah. uh, Serafina. Yeah. These plays came in, and we said, my God, they are exciting because mm -hmm. theater always has to be fueled mm -hmm. by some it's social yeah. impact that mm -hmm. is happening on a people. Mm -hmm. And you had to, in order to move that shackle from the people, mm -hmm. you need some sort of voice. And theater gave us that voice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, what's happening today? There, there are very few isms. Mm -hmm. There are very few things that we can, uh, we have a, a strong voice to fight against. Mm -hmm. Because, like you said uh, earlier, our young people that we fought so hard to get them a better education, better housing, um, better jobs. Um, they come out of uh, Wharton School. They come out of Yale. They mm -hmm. come out, and they they're not coming to the black theater. Mm -hmm. They're going straight into television, mm -hmm. straight into Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And you know, some of our bigger artists now are making fifteen, twenty million dollars a, a film, film. <laughs> a film, and. Uh, uh, for whatever reason, mm -hmm. uh, they uh, can't give that money to everybody. Mm -hmm. And I think the theater is the one that is sorely lacking mm -hmm. uh, that middle ground. Even you, you, when we were talking before the show, you mentioned that of the 100 black businesses, they give only about 0.5% of oh, their yeah. uh, charity or donations to uh, theater. Yeah, yeah um, uh, every year we know black enterprises list the top 100 black businesses, mm -hmm. okay? What we found is less than one half or one percent of those 100 black businesses give anything at all to mm -hmm. uh, black theaters, dance companies, music ensembles, uh, symphonies. Uh, they might purchase art for their offices. Mm -hmm. And that is that, that is that difference. They what can we do to do consciousness raising? Of course, this is what we're doing right here right, on the show. That's what we're doing now. Bring but, it. but to really get into the psyche of those businesses and those middle class people, uh, art really is the pulse of a culture. Right. Uh, it's visual art. It's dance. Mm -hmm. It's performing art. Performing it's art. It's theater. theater. But theater, probably more than any of them, has a message. Right. And the message is very clear through the emotions that are expressed there. What can we do to get this across to some of our fellow uh, people in the African-American community who might have the resources to support theater? I think what we have to, some sort, in some sort of way, we have to talk, we have to have this dialogue, mm -hmm. because there, uh, the black artist has no concept of what's happening in a black business. Mm -hmm. Most of the chief executive officers and chief operating officers of these companies I mean, they sort of like look at art and um, dance and music as a frivolity, as a uh, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, I think that is a major, major mistake. You know, if mm -hmm. you look at the contributions of the Avonale Dance Company mm -hmm. with even a piece like Revelation mm -hmm. uh, or um, the Dance Theater of Harlem, mm -hmm. you know, or uh, the Let the Negro Ensemble Go Under, mm -hmm. A Crossroads Go Under, mm -hmm. or uh, not supporting theaters like the New Federal. We are here mm -hmm. and we are trying to make a difference very mm -hmm. much the way uh, black businesses mm -hmm. are. The black businesses um, have a product, whether it is a magazine, mm -hmm. whether it is oil, or whether it is an, um, an automobile. Mm -hmm. That product, in a sense, is, is, is sold. Mm -hmm. Someone gives them money mm -hmm. and the overage on that is their profit. Right. Okay. 
theater is a uh, spiritual and dance is a spiritual mm -hmm. commodity. I mean, you come and you look at that, you can't mm -hmm. own that. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. You can only take that as a part mm -hmm. of who you are. That's right. You know, and that part of who you are sustains mm -hmm. you, makes you uh, able to make a better automobile, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> makes, mm -hmm. you, uh, makes you a better person, we think, you know. So uh, I think that dialogue has to happen, that there are no, uh, um, like we've been friends with 25 mm -hmm. or 30 years. Um, it, I don't think uh, uh, there is any kind of mystery mm -hmm. uh, in what we are doing to you, uh, as far as you look at it. You were right. the chairman of the Negro Ensemble right. Company, mm -hmm. you know, plus, you know, you relate to all these mm -hmm. businesses in the, in the world, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think a lot of businessmen can't do that. They don't mm -hmm. see that. Uh, they're coming on as a board member of the dance company mm -hmm. of Harlem or uh, Alvin mm -hmm. uh, Alias Dance mm -hmm. Company or New Federal mm -hmm. Theater would give these companies an unbelievable new kind of mm -hmm. uh, oomph, a new kind of thrust, if yeah, you will. Yeah, it's very interesting. I serve on a number of boards, cultural boards, education boards, advocacy boards, and I find that there are not as many young Roscoe Browns uh -huh. coming up to do this and I asked myself the question I asked some of the young people and it is about the business it uh -huh. is about their keeping in touch with their profession etc however one of the things that our history has taught us is that we have to walk in those steps that preceded us right we didn't get here just because <laughs> we're smart <laughs> right, and right. good looking. Right, we right. got here because somebody else walked on the steps. And I have the same conversation about black athletes as well. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, having been young once, mm -hmm. I realize that when you're young, you think you're going to rediscover the world, you think you know everything. Mm -hmm. But I think the, the uh, uh, cultural constant in this is the history and the tradition of what black folks have done, have gone through, and how we have triumphed. Mm -hmm. Many of our plays end up with a triumph. Right. It might be a personal triumph. It might be a political triumph. And those triumphs just don't happen. No, no. They come from a long tradition. Uh, one of the things that we uh, are actively involved in now is the recruitment of a new audience. Mm -hmm. And this o new audience, we hope, will be between the eight, age of 18 and 35. Good, there okay. you are. And we are actively going after this audience. We got a grant to go out and reach out for this audience. And we call these spiritually based audience. Mm -hmm. They don't have to be religious, no, right. just spiritually based because we noticed that in the last 15 or 20 years, almost every young artist, whether he's a rapper, a singer, mm -hmm. or a dancer, when they, when they receive an award, they thank their family mm -hmm. and they thank God. Mm -hmm. They are very much into mm -hmm. that. Now, Ozzie Davis, who pointed that out to me, mm -hmm. uh, made me very much aware of this changing mm -hmm. uh, audience. Now, Ozzie is in his 80s, you know, mm -hmm. so, so it's like traditionally, you would say, oh, okay, he doesn't know this, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But right away, he said, wait a minute, this is what uh, you guys should be uh, mm -hmm. uh, reaching out for, and I'm going to do everything I can mm -hmm. Uh, to help you do that. Mm -hmm. And to that end, Ozzy and Ruby uh, met with uh, me uh, and Cliff Frazier, my chairman, uh, Bob Rantia, mm -hmm. um, Black Spectrum, Carl Clay, and uh, Martin all, all the old troopers. Yeah, all the old troopers. <laughs> and, and they do what they can mm -hmm. in terms of bringing attention to mm -hmm. uh, our theaters. Mm -hmm. And what we are doing then is trying to recruit that young audience mm -hmm. because Ozzy and Ruby and mm -hmm. um, all the traditional shows, mm -hmm. whether it's Gil Noble or mm -hmm. shows like yours, mm -hmm. have a certain listening audiences, mm -hmm. and we want to be able to get that audience mm -hmm. plus mm -hmm. this younger audience who, mm -hmm. um, who right now mm -hmm. we think uh, do not have an ism. They don't believe in anything other than mm -hmm. capitalism. A and enjoyment. Yeah, because that's what is sold on the media. That's what's sold in the music. That's what's sold in the commercials. Mm -hmm. And some of it's licentious and appeals to baser instincts. Mm -hmm. But the reason that happens in any society, whether it's Rome or our society, is the decadence of the system, mm -hmm. which allows corruption and degradation and denigration of people to go on. Mm -hmm. And that's why, through theater as well, through television, 
we have to continue to make those challenges. Right. And I'm so proud that you've been able to keep New Federal Theater afloat <laughs> yeah, for so right. many years. Now tell me about what New Federal Theater is up to now. Okay, right now uh, we are doing a musical, mm -hmm. and we call it the first hip-hop musical to be done in the theater. It's called This This and This That. <laughs> well, okay. let me ask this, because uh -huh. Uh, uh -huh. I think I talked to somebody when they were doing Def Jam poetry uh -huh. thing with Russell. Uh -huh. uh, they they claim that's the first hip-hop, but it was really, it was some music, of course, yeah. but it was really rhyme. Uh -huh. Whereas you have a, a book, book uh, uh, an original uh, score by a rap group that really flourished during the early 90s called the Funky Natives. Mm -hmm. And the Funky Natives are made up of two just brilliant young rhyme artists who mm -hmm. went on to college and other places. Mm -hmm. And But I, I always held on to that record. You know, I always held on to that record, yeah. and it really moved me. And these two young artists are John Fulton, yeah and Michael King, who happened mm -hmm. to be my son, but he says, uh -huh. look, I'm going to go on to school. I don't want you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, no, I don't <laughs> go who you went to. <laughs> right, I don't go. Uh, and so we are opening that, and it goes through, I don't know when your show will air, but it mm -hmm. goes through November 30th. Okay, yeah. fine. And mm -hmm. it's every Wednesday through mm -hmm. uh, Sunday, and uh, it is, it's got some of the finest young actors under 30 mm -hmm. that you will find anywhere in New York. Which raises a question, the show has a timeline, it'll end, but a show like that can be revived. Oh, yeah, It can yeah. be done o over. Over and, and over again. cultural institutions, schools, colleges, social, can bring that mm -hmm. to their venue. Or they can the, bring the student to, to both. To right. both. To I mean, it's very, it's very easily transferable. Mm -hmm. so these kind of shows and the mm -hmm. shows we do uh, become a part of mm -hmm the American theater tradition. Mm -hmm. So what happens is, like I know, like the Negro Ensemble Company mm -hmm. did, Ceremonies in Dark Old Man, The River Night. That's a tradition. Yeah, yeah. Th it's a, these plays are part of something, the canon of black theater. That's right. You may mm -hmm. see them all over the world. Mm -hmm. You may go to Jamaica, there's mm -hmm. a production of Ceremony. <laughs> or go to London in Brixton, there's mm -hmm. a production of No Place to Be Somebody. Mm -hmm. Or uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. River Niger. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's like wow, man. Mm -hmm. And I remember that little theater in New York mm -hmm. where we set up there, and when they first did it, yeah, right. nice mm -hmm. published. It's everywhere, yeah. and that is what we are about. Mm -hmm. You know, that's interesting. Uh, you mentioned a lot of great plays and a lot of great playwrights who mm -hmm. were involved in them. I think Lorraine Hansberry was probably the first black playwright to get major exposure with Raisin in the Sun. Right. Is, is that your feeling as well? Uh, uh, well, Lorraine Hansberry broke through and she was the first black woman to have a play on Broadway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, prior to that, uh, there had been black, but Lofter mm -hmm. Mitchell right, certainly sure. was writing. Mm -hmm. uh, William Branch mm -hmm. was writing and writing very, very well. Extremely well. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, the forerunner to the Negro Ensemble Company, the American Negro mm -hmm. Theater, mm -hmm. Uh, did uh, a white version of Anna Lucasta. Mm -hmm. uh, Anna Lucasta's white play, they did a black version mm -hmm. that moved to Broadway. Mm -hmm. uh, but Lorraine Hansberry sort of like made it all possible mm -hmm. for this new generation of mm -hmm. black artists who wanted theater to move in that direction. And to address the Social cultural issues of black right. folks. And, and I, uh, when do I leave the neighborhood? Yes. Yeah. When do I leave the neighborhood? Yeah. When uh, do I leave the neighborhood? And how Africa impacts mm -hmm. on our culture. That's right. And ironically, uh, we were talking earlier, the man who produced that play, Philip mm -hmm. Rose, uh -huh. uh, uh, I think it's about 83, 84, yeah. came out of retirement and directed a play for our theater last year. What was that play? It was called Whose Family Values by Richard Abrams. And it was an interracial play about a young couple, mm -hmm. uh, black, white couple, and how that impacts on the family, mm -hmm. who is really uh, exploring abortion clinics, blowing mm -hmm. up abortion clinics and all that. And Phil Rose directed that, and it was stunning. Mm -hmm. By the way, Phil Rose has a new book out, and so do I. But <laughs> yeah. What's your new book? My book is called The Impact of Race on Theater and Culture. Good. Okay, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, right? The Impact <laughs> of Race on Theater mm -hmm. and Culture. And um, it'll be out in, uh, I think it's about December, mm -hmm. and I'll make sure you get mm -hmm. a copy. And we'll be talking about it on the show. Yeah. Now, this is very interesting. We talk about the impact of race. Race 
it impacts everything in yeah. America, everything in the world. Yeah. Why is it that so many of our younger black people are not as cognizant of that as we are? Well, I, th I, th I think our younger black people come through institutions of higher education, mm -hmm. right? And in these institutions of higher education, they play down the race card, mm -hmm. okay? They play down the race card because uh, they find that, look, if I just be quiet, I can, I can sneak into this system. Mm -hmm. I can sneak in here and get what I want mm -hmm. and move on. Mm -hmm. But if I talk about race, too much attention will be brought mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. uh, and that attention will, in a sense, uh, uh, keep me from moving in mm -hmm. two areas I want to move in. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they get out in the world, and they may get a job at one of the Fortune 500 mm -hmm. companies as a junior executive, and they raise, you know, up to 125000 mm -hmm. a year. But in a year, they hate that position mm -hmm. because they see they are there to destroy black people. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I don't care what company it is. Mm -hmm. If it's a Fortune 500 company, ultimately, mm -hmm. uh, it's about uh, uh, holding black people down. What about the fact that some of these companies produce videos and music and records that our folks perform but tend to denigrate our own communities? Yes. That, that, that's a sort of a push-pull. Mm -hmm. I want the company to be successful, but in so doing, they're presenting some material that's denigrating to our folks. Okay. Some of these videos and so on, uh, and some of the television programs are well, just uh, totally denigrating. Well, well I, here's my theory on that, right? Uh, and I had this conversation several times. I could make a, uh, a piece of art that says uh, black people are responsible for their own victimization. Mm -hmm. White people would buy it. Mm -hmm. okay? That's right. I can say, uh, I can make a piece of art that says, Slaves were really happy. Mm -hmm. All of them were not unhappy. Mm -hmm. White people really love it. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, in order to promote that piece of material, I could promote it, whether it's a movie, if I make this movie for $10 million, I could spend $25 million to promote it. The word of mouth on it not being good is mm -hmm. not strong enough to counteract yeah. that $25 million promotion. Good point. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's how all that happens. Mm -hmm. We sit and we, whether we are into television, whether we're into mm -hmm. the radio, someone puts a record on the radio, mm -hmm. okay? Now, if I listen to the radio and that record, I'm also going to listen to the commercial selling soap. Mm -hmm. that, and that soap commercial is what keeps that record on, mm -hmm. whether it's no, good or bad, right. okay? So that's what we're mm -hmm. into. These young people um, are brilliant. They are, I'm yeah. telling you, some of them come out of these universities, mm -hmm. I mean, they, they talk for me to me for hours, you know, mm -hmm. and I watch their dilemma. Their dilemmas mm -hmm. are very, very real. Unbelievable mm -hmm. student loans to pay off. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable right. need to get mm -hmm. into positions of mm -hmm. sixty-five, seventy-five thousand dollars a year mm -hmm. when those positions don't e mm -hmm. don't exist for black people. Mm -hmm. You know, you may select a few of yeah. them, uh, and those few to get in give that vis mm -hmm. visibility that it's possible for everybody to get in. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, you know. Let's look ahead 50 mm -hmm. years. Okay. Uh, 50 years, this country will be half people of color. Okay. Uh, about half Latino, uh, about 20% African, about 5 6% Asian. Mm -hmm. Will that make a difference in terms of how we influence culture? I'm thinking of some of the European groups that were excluded at the beginning of the 20th century, who are now very, very influential Mm -hmm. in our culture. Right. Do you think that the demographic change will influence the way in which we as a people deal with our culture? Well, I think, uh, uh, yes, I, obviously the buying power, mm -hmm. uh, the trends, mm -hmm. uh, whether, you know, it's an unbelievable hip-hop culture right now, mm -hmm. but the ownership of that hip-hop culture and the selling of that uh, the distribution of information mm -hmm. to the hip hop culture is controlled by white America. Mm -hmm. and it, it will all, as long as that control is there, mm -hmm. then they are going to uh, uh, make the difference. Mm -hmm. Now, whether it is Russell Simmons or Bill Gates, mm -hmm. uh, where Russell Simmons uh, pioneered in this new ownership after Barry Gordy, mm -hmm. if it had not been a Barry Gordy, that certainly wouldn't have right been now. a mm -hmm. Russell Simmons. Uh, Bill Gates 
uh, uh, introduced a certain binary theory uh, mm -hmm. and computerization of the world, mm -hmm. and that is now mm -hmm. the way to communicate. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, this uh, need that young people are moving into that and learning that, mm -hmm. certainly they're going to have jobs, yeah. mm -hmm. but they won't have any ownership. Yeah. And now what we have is uh, in black theater and black culture, you can't own this. Yeah, it's us. It's us. It's us. <laughs> it's us. <laughs> tell us about, uh, as we come to the close of the program, tell us about how you are raising funds and getting support for New Federal. Okay. Um, uh, right now, we write maybe 300 letters uh, a year, and we ask uh, black people, people who are in sports, people who are in the theater, mm -hmm. uh, people who are in the film industry, just make a contribution. Mm -hmm. We go to the traditional places like the New York State Council on the Arts, who supports us, been supporting us for They've 25 years. They've done a great years. job with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we go to the National Endowment for the Arts, uh, uh, the borough of Manhattan, uh, the Virginia Field. Mm -hmm. I mean, we go to all the traditional places, but the overage that we need to do a play and pay an artist a living wage, mm -hmm. we still have to go out into this vast community around the United States mm -hmm. and try and get funding. Mm -hmm. Uh, to that end, as I said earlier, Ozzy and Ruby helps us tremendously. You know, uh, we hope to even have a letter go out under their signature. Dr. Maya Angelou helps mm -hmm. us. You know, mm -hmm. all these people who really believe in what we are doing and believe in what we're doing for, I mean, 33 years. You know, I was a young guy, 99 pounds, I think, when I started <laughs> <laughs> when I started the theater, but. Uh, uh, that's how we try and raise money. We come to people like you to give us a platform mm -hmm. to talk about it. And, you know, it's not many black shows out there, mm -hmm. you know, that can give us a platform mm -hmm. to talk about it. That's very true. Yeah, and, I, and I really, I can't tell you, man, when you, when you hear from Dr. Roscoe, you say, oh, let me, <laughs> let me get on the phone. Well, I have to tell you, Woody, yeah. I, I am so proud of what you've done. Mm -hmm. I value our friendship and our interaction, and I like the spirit the spirit that says we will project our culture and our concerns to the public mm -hmm. and it may take a hard road but it'll happen it's going to happen we want to wish you well in your hip hop music what's it called this this and this that <laughs> this this and this that <laughs> yeah, yeah. okay that's a good way to close the program <laughs> today on African American Legends we've been talking with Woody King producer of New Federal Theater this this and this that yeah. <laughs>